Hello and welcome. In this presentation, I will be using the Finance Solver app, which is on the TI Inspire calculator, to solve a couple of VC further maths problems from past exam papers after I have completed a brief introduction. Yeah. The Finance Solver app is basically an implementation of the annuities formula. Now, the annuities formula is this complex beast here. And from a further maths perspective, you don't need to actually implement this particular formula. You just need to be aware of what the actual letters or the variables mean because your TI Inspire calculator does that for you. Now, when should you be using your TI Inspire calculator? Well, it will help you with reducing balance loans, annuities, and adding to investments. So, the Finance Solver app is accessed. Okay, I'm just starting up my uh, calculator now. Is accessed. Uh, let's add a calculator. Now, if you go via the menu, and then you select option eight, and then option one. What it will present you with is a list of variables. What you do is you populate those variables with your known information and typically there's one field that's left blank and it will solve and there's the finance solver will calculate that missing value so what i'm going to do quickly is show you what the fields actually mean now n is the total number of payments I is the annual interest rate. PV is the present or the initial value of our loan or investment. Payment is the payment that we are making. In other words, it's the regular payments. FV is the future value of the loan or the investment. In other words, after so many years or months, how much will I have, um, what's the I have earned or how much do I have to pay off that sort of thing PPY the number of payments made per year so for instance if my loan was quarterly PPY would be 4 if it was monthly PPY would be 12 CPY is the calculations per year and typically that is the same as PPY and payment at basically is when is the calculation performed I'd recommend that you leave that at end unless you're directed to change that. Now, the only thing we need to be very mindful of is the sign that we use. The sign for the actual values of our variables. In particular, PV, the present value. Payment and future value. As we need to be consistent with our, with our signs. The, the, as long as we are consistent, the formula and the calculator works well. Now, the convention that I use, I use an, a positive to indicate that money is flowing to me. So, as an investor or as somebody taking out a loan, a positive indicates that I am receiving the money from either the bank or an investment company. And I will use a negative to indicate that I am actually money is flowing away from me. In other words, I'm paying back a little bit of my loan or I'm making another investment payment. So what we're going to do is look at two exam paper questions. Yeah. This first one is from quite a way back, 2004. And just quickly, we have a look at the question. Anna borrows $12,000 at 7.5% interest per annum compounding monthly 
the loan is to be repaid over four years by equal monthly amounts. The monthly repayments can be determined with the annuities formula. Now, what I tend to do is I list down the variables that I have from my calculator, then I look to see what they use missing and populate all the ones that I do know. So the first thing we quickly say, well, we know that we borrow 12,000, so that is the present value. In other words, I have borrowed $12,000. Positive, because the bank is giving me the money. Well, they're not really giving me the money, but the money's flowing to me. Right, interest rate 7.5%. That's fairly straightforward. Now, compounding monthly, that means that my payments per year, calculations per year, will be 12 loan is going to be repaid over four years again equal monthly repayments so four years the number of repayments will be four times 12 and that's all the information that i have here I'll pop, and you see here i've got a question mark against the payment because that's what's going to be asked for me a bit further down in part b of this question so quickly we need to identify the values of the A, the N, and the P. And that's really just a mapping exercise between these, the names of these variables here, and A, which is typically what we use for the amount. So the amount is the future value. In other words, the A will be zero. The number, the N, is basically the number of payments. In other words, that would be four times 12, which would be 48. And the P is my starting principle or my present value. So I would effectively put those values in here. That's effectively what you really need to know of the annuities uh, formula. And if I needed to actually calculate these or calculate the monthly repayment, then I'd actually now go to my calculator. So I'll bring up the calculator and I all, all I really need to do is populate these values. So, first one, num n. Now this is a fairly neat trick. What you can do, instead of actually putting in the 48, you can actually put in four multiplied by 12. And that particular field will be calculated once you tab out of that. Now the interest rate, 7.5. Now the present value, how much? Have I borrowed 12,000? The payment is what I'm being asked to calculate. I'll jump back to that in a minute. Future value is zero. Payments per year, 12. And notice when I tab out of that field, both are populated with the same value. Let's go back to this payment. Now you can either just leave that blank, or I like to put in a question mark, and then when you hit enter, you end up with a value of negative 290.1468. I'll just um, tuck my calculator away for a little while. Uh, whoops. And no, I don't want to save that. And what you, if you recall, yeah, we had that was the value for my payment negative 290.1468. Now, the negative indicates that I'm making that payment. That's all that that minus means. And then all I need to do is do a little bit of rounding. So my answer would be $290.15. Just make sure you drop that negative sign off when you provide that answer. And the final example. This time. Okay, example two. This example is from the 2009 Further Maths exam. Now, in order to drought proof the course, the golf club will borrow $200,000 to develop water treatment facility. The club will establish a reducing balance loan and pay interest monthly at the rate of 4.65% per annum. $1,500 per month will be paid on this loan. And the question's asking, 
how much of the principal will we have to pay after five years? So that's really asking for the future value. So what I'd like to do is I like to list all my variables and then start to write down what their values are. So future value is, well, we don't know. We know that we are paying $1,500 per month. So that's our payment. Negative to indicate that we are making that payment. Now, 200,000 is what I have borrowed. And then you go 200,000. Well, the interest is 4.65%. The number of payments, well, we are paying monthly, aren't we? Interest is being calculated monthly. So payments per year, calculations per year. The same. And the number of payments will be, well, how many years? Well, there's five years and we have 12 payments per year. So what I do, I look to put those values into my calculator. Well, we'll just whack that one in there. And then see what I'll end up with a future value. In other words, how much of that principal do I have to pay off? So, quickly bring up my calculator. Save a bit of time. I have pre-populated these values. Future value is the one which I don't have. I'll put a question mark there. Tab out of that field. Ooh, input argument must be numeric. Okay. I'm going to be like that, is it? There we go. You'll see here 151134 and 38 cents. So that's the important number. So back to here. That's the number that we had from our Finance Solver app on our calculator. All I need to do is say, well, write your answer in dollars, correct in the nearest cent, consider rounding and consider the sign. I need to just drop that sign because I will be making that payment there of $151,133.38. I hope this presentation has assisted you and you now have a better understanding of the Finance Solver app. Bye for now.